Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike, and in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you about the stack and the queue data structures. These are two of the most basic data structures and really good for beginners to learn. So why don't we start off with the stack? Over here, I have a little diagram of what a stack kind of looks like. We have three elements, and these elements are gonna go inside the stack. And we're actually gonna be building a stack and a queue at the end of the video in JavaScript, so stick around for that. The stack is what we call a first in last out or philo data structure. It means that the element that you put in first is the last element that comes out of it. And a lot of times with these data structures, the way that we insert elements or the way that the elements are arranged or ordered is significant. And that's true of the stack. So let's take a look at the two basic operations of a stack, which are push and pop. So when we push an element onto the stack, it means that we take it and we drop it down or we push it down to the bottom. So you can think of it like this. A stack can be thought of vertically like that and we would sort of push an item down, almost like a Pez dispenser. So I'd push this first item and then we could push the second item and then we could push the third item. So all three of those operations are pushes. So we're inserting an element into the stack. Now, when we want to take an element out, we have to take it out in the reverse order. So I wouldn't be able to just take this one and move it out of the stack. The only way I'd be able to do that is if I first remove the three and the two. That's what we call popping. So when I pop an element off the stack, I would take it, grab it, and then take it off the stack, and then I'd be able to get access to it. Then I could take the two, grab that, take it off the stack, and then I could grab the one. So you'll notice the one was the first one that we entered into the stack, or we pushed into the stack, but it's the last one that gets popped out. So that's the basic ordering of a stack. And that can be useful for a number of different algorithms or a number of different situations. The memory of your computer, funny enough, is actually, it tends to be arranged in this sort of stack. And that's generally how uh, the stack comes into play in a lot of lower level programming languages is we're pushing and popping things off of the call stack or off of the stack in general. All right, so that's a little overview of the stack. And again, we have those two basic operations, which is push and pop. Now, the second data structure I wanna cover is a queue. So down here, I have an example of a queue. A queue is a lot like a line. So, you know, you get in line at the bank or if you're in line at a car wash, uh, it's basically the same thing, right? So we would take the first element and I would enqueue it. That's what we would call the sort of insertion operation. So I would enqueue it and then I would take the second element and then I would enqueue that onto the, into the queue, and then we would take the third element and we would do the same thing. And now if we wanna remove these, I wouldn't be able to just take the three and remove it. Instead, if I wanted to do that, I would first have to remove the one, then I could remove the two, and then finally I could remove the three. So this is what we would call a first in, first out, right? So we put this one in first, and then we take it out first. And again, that's gonna be useful for a number of different algorithms uh, in computer programming, but that's the basics of how that data structure works. All right, so now that we have an understanding of those two data structures and their basic operations, pushing and popping for the stack and enqueuing and dequeuing for the queue, let's go over to JavaScript and we're gonna actually implement them in code. So here in my JavaScript, and I'm just over here on CodePen, I'm gonna create a class called stack, and we'll start by implementing this. So we'll create a constructor, and the stack is just gonna have one item, so we're gonna call it this.list. So this list is what we're gonna to use to keep track of the stack. So the list will be storing all the elements, and then we'll expose the push and the pop operations and we'll uh, sort of modify this list accordingly. So I'm just gonna set this equal to an empty list. And then down here, we're gonna create two methods. So there's gonna be pop and there's gonna be push. So let's see what we would do with these two methods. So for the push method, what we're gonna do is we'll take an element. So that's what it's gonna take here. And why don't we just say element and it's gonna push it onto the stack. So what that means is we need to sort of add it on in the way that we added it on over here, right? So when I push the element, it goes down to the bottom, and then this one goes up on the top of that one, and then this one goes on the top of that one. So we could think of the array just as kind of like that. So um, this element would be at position zero, this would be at position one, and this would be at position two. 
So let's go ahead. We would just say this dot list and to push this onto the stack, we can set the list equal to, we're going to use the spread operator here. So I can say this dot list, and then we're going to add this other element onto the end. So right here, you'll see this is sort of the equivalent of taking all of these elements and then adding that one onto the top, right? So we would add it just like this. If this is at index position zero, this is at index position one, the next one would be at index position two. So that's sort of what we're doing here. And then to pop the element, we would just want to grab the element from the end of the list and pull that off. So we could just say element that we want to return is equal to this dot list dot at negative one. So this will grab the item from the end of the list. And then we're going to set the list equal to and I, once again, I'm going to use the spread operator, this dot list dot slice. And we're going to slice from zero to negative one. So this is going to grab all of the list except that last item. And that's what we want to do with this pop operation. And then we're going to return the element. Okay, so those are our two operations with the stack. Now I'm over here, I have my console. Let's see if this works. So we're gonna create a new stack and then let's start pushing some elements onto it and then we'll print out the stack. So we could say stack.push and we'll just push in some numbers. So I'll push one, stack.push two, and then stack.push three. So this will match that example. And then let's just console.log stack.list. So you'll see here that those elements got pushed on just like they did over here in this example. Now let's take a look at what happens when we pop. So I could say stack.pop and this should give us that three. And then if I say stack.pop again, this should give us the two. And then, and this console isn't clearing out in between, but You'll see here that we get three, two, and one, and maybe I can clear this out. So there we have three, two, and one because we popped all of these elements off the stack. All right, so now let's go ahead and write our queue data structure. So it's gonna be pretty similar to stack, just the ordering is gonna be a bit different. So here we could say queue, and once again, we'll give a constructor. So in here, we want to place this dot list. So once again, this will just be used to kind of keep track of all the elements. And then we have two methods that we want to use on this. So it's NQ and DQ. So when we NQ the element, we want to push it into the list, or I guess not push, but we want to NQ it into the list. And it'll be pretty much the same as pushing here, where we'll just put it onto the end of the list. Now, there's a couple different ways we could go about doing this, but this is one way we could do this. So we'll just sort of push it onto the end of the list. And now when we DQ, we're gonna grab the element from the beginning of the list instead of the end of the list like we did with the stack. So I could say const element, and this is gonna be equal to this dot list at index position zero. And then down here, we'll change the list. So we'll say this dot list is equal to, and once again, I'm gonna use the spread operator, this dot list dot slice one. So we'll get rid of that first element, and then we're gonna return element just like that. All right, so now let's go ahead and see if we can get an example of our queue. So we'll create one down here, new queue, and then let's NQ a few elements. So queue.nq, and we'll just do one, two, and then three. Now this is being kind of annoying. Oh, and also I forgot to add in this needs to take an element up here. So let's clear this out. And now what we can do is see how our list looks. So console log q.list. And that's giving us these. So one, two, and three. And now when we DQ items from this, let's see what we get. So we should get one first, and then we'll get two, and then three. So one, two, and three. So that's looking good. And so now we have implemented our stack and our queue data structure. Now, one thing you'll notice is that we're using an array here to keep track of these, but this is more just for our internal use. So whenever anybody interacts with these data structures, they'll interact with them through these methods. 
Okay, so that just about does it for me. Once again, the stack data structure is first in, last out. And then the queue data structure is first in, first out. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.